looks like we have a quorum. Uh, call to order and uh, knowledge and risk. Oh, sorry, I'm doing the knowledge and respect, but I'm not even sure. Well, I'm on Moachop Mushal at traditional territory, so I'm not sure about you guys, but let's just have it. Um, Adoption of the public agenda. I would move that the regular meeting of the Municipal Service Committee be adopted as presented. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. No, sorry, we're doing the reverse, oh, aren't we? Uh, anybody opposed? Okay, uh, petitions and delegations. I'm not seeing any. Uh, move adoption of previous meeting minutes. Moved. Second. Okay, uh, is there anyone opposed? Seeing none. Public consideration. <laughs> Not aware of any uh, chair's report. I don't really have anything to report except I'm happy to see the terms of reference here. And uh, so I, I know what, what we're actually here for. And uh, yeah, that's about it for that. I um, would move that the report from the chief administrative officer be received. Second. Second. Okay, is there anyone opposed? <clears throat> okay, take it away, Dave. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So again, as you can see, not a heck of a lot on the report, but there was some uh, discussion and a resolution that the committee would like to uh, see and discuss the terms of reference. So we put some of the points of conversation in there, but um, uh, other than that, we're, we're happy to engage some conversation about the terms. Okay, does anybody have any comments regarding the terms of reference? I am not seeing any hands Just, up. Hang on. Sure. Take your time. <clears throat> it's a thin agenda, so. I I put my hand up, but it's not. There it is. There we go. There it is. Okay, we see your hand. Yeah. Okay, so just one hand. When in the past, we used to do roundtable discussions, like go from community to community just to get an update on what the issues were or whatever that was uh, facing uh, different communities um, just to give us a better perspective and uh, it was never in the I don't believe it was in the mandate to do that but uh, mm -hmm. it was just something that we felt was important and I don't know if we haven't done it for a while I don't think uh, and, and whether or not the committee felt that that's something that we should resurrect uh, does anybody else want to comment on that? Uh, for for my part, um, I, I think that would be a good issue or, or a good thing to be doing and resurrecting again. Like I'm looking back on the old meeting, so I'm not seeing a whole lot there, but that's basically what we were doing at the time. So uh, where should we be having the, that discussion? Uh, new business or I'm not I'm not sure. Well, I believe we used now COVID interrupted all that. Uh, and I don't think we even met for municipal services. Now, historically, municipal services we've done tourism at and uh, a few other things. But what we did, and, and I'm not certain if it was uh, an agenda item, but we did do a round table um, of what was going on and coming up in each community. And and I'm not sure, maybe Tom, you can correct me or not, if it was just a standing item on there when we met to do a round table um, uh, at the start of the meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my recollection is that typically the uh, before the, before each meeting was terminated, there would be an opportunity, uh, usually led by the chair, uh, without it being actually on the agenda. Um, so the chair would basically go around the room and just ask if there was other issues that any director wanted to bring up or to uh, inform the committee as to what was happening in the local area. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, I see Director Unger has his hand up. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair Davis. Yeah, actually, Tom just kind of reiterated what I was going to say is we just kind of did at the end of the meeting, you know, what's going on in your community, uh, you know, letting the other directors know if, if something's coming up, you know, like Golden River Days or passes days or whatever and you know that, that kind of stuff just kind of informing you know, everybody what was happening in your communities and we it was nothing formal we just kind of you know at the end of the meeting type of thing right 
Uh, sorry, I'm struggling with this. Uh, looks like somebody else has their right. hand up. Director Kerr. Okay, Director Kerr. Thank you, Chair. And <clears throat> I've just got, I've been on this committee for a while, but this is the first time I've noticed <clears throat> uh, 4.2. Uh, voting on questions before the committee is restricted to those directors who are mayors of the municipality they represent. Um, has that always been there? And not that we do a lot of voting on this committee, but, uh, you know, Campbell River has, has a number of directors besides the mayor. Um, how is the voting structure? Does it work? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I can advise that that yes, that that was there, I believe, from the get go. Um, I, I can't necessarily explain all the reasons why, but this is something that uh, the board wanted to look at as part of the committee structure and perhaps because of the number of directors from Campbell River. I don't know, but but that was, I think, part of the rationale for uh, for having that there to provide for equal representation from communities, perhaps. Uh, that's really all I know about that, but it has been there since day one as far as I'm aware. Okay, okay thanks, Thank Tom. Uh, Director Cornfield. Yeah, just to bring some historical perspective, um, and when I was mayor for the city of Campbell River, Ted uh, from Zabalas and John from Sayward and myself, I forget who was on from Gold River at the time, but a lot of times we'd just have lunch together before the meetings and uh, talk about challenges that we were facing as mayors. And it was also about uh, mentoring new people, you know. Um, so we talked about mayor stuff, you know. And uh, so we thought rather than sort of have this ad hoc and people, some people feeling excluded, right? Uh, to, well, what about if we had a, like a municipal services member? So it was about the mayors getting together and trying to open it up inclusive. I think what we've got now is far better. And that's one section. And I thank Director Kerr for bringing it up. Um, so that was the rationale behind it, sort of what led to the formation of it. It was to promote discussion uh, on municipal matters, and I think it was Director Adams uh, at the time we were wanting to expand and talk community to community about tourism and tourism function and economic development and things that affected communities differently than the electoral area. So it kind of grew, and uh, I think it's something that should be changed that its representatives anybody that is a, a director um, for their representative uh, community uh, should be able to attend and vote. So I, I think that's something that definitely needs to attention. Mm -hmm. uh, director Adams. Thank you. I agree with uh, uh, Director Cornfield that uh, um, so through to Mr. Leach, through to um, Mr. Yates, uh, what would be the appropriate procedure to change change it so that all uh, uh, appointees to the municipal services are eligible to vote? Um, Mr. Chairman, um, I could offer one uh, option, which be would be to recommend that the section uh, the first sentence is section 4.2, or possibly the whole section could be uh, repealed out of the terms of reference. And that, will, that would. Then, Mr. Chair, I will make that motion. Okay. Do I have a second? second? Yes, okay. second, Kevin. A, okay. So it's seconded. Um, if I can speak to the motion? Absolutely. Just, uh, I think I totally agree with and thank Council, uh, Director Kerr for bringing it up. Uh, I think if uh, anybody is appointed to this, they should have uh, an equal opportunity to uh, uh, to have an equal vote. I, I do have my own question regarding this. As, as a municipal services committee that was originally formed for, for mayors to have these conversations, I, I'm, I'm not sure that it is appropriate to 
have counselors in in this, this forum because it, it's sort of creeping towards what we already have with the regional district and and this is why i asked these questions originally as to what the terms of reference were of this and uh I, I thought I was getting it, but now it's sounding a lot more like regional district minus the electoral areas. Um, so I'm just putting that out there. Uh, any further comments? Okay, so we have a I have, I, my my hands oh, up. But I think. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. And I think my, Director Cornfield might be. Okay. Um, uh, go yeah, ahead. Uh, my recollection. Uh, and uh, my memory may not be as good as uh, Director Cornfield's, was the idea of having this municipal um, committee was so that if there were issues that um, the municipal directors wanted to pursue, because it is difficult at the regional district table because of the weighted vote to get, especially the smaller communities, voices heard, uh, that was part of it. And it did start off as the mayor's only, and somehow it has morphed into more. I'm of the view that this, at, for this com for the purposes of this committee, I think it's important that it's one municipality, one vote, um, because otherwise, I mean, our current uh, membership might be, um, you know, <coughs> everyone's cooperative, and, but this terms of reference continues onward. And so I think it's important that a municipality like Tassis and or Zabal, I mean, because they're so much smaller than Campbell River, have that equal voice at the table at this committee. So anything that comes to this committee has to then go to the board in any event. But at least at, from this committee's point of view, I think there should be that equal voice. Mm -hmm. uh, Director Cornfield. Um. If you look under section three, we deleted section 3.1 previously and 3.3. So it says membership on the committee shall be comprised of all municipal directors. When you start to look at what we're doing, um, general administrative <laughs> things and general topics is what we talk about. And then it, um, yeah, it's, different uh, from the board in what we deal with. Most of it is informational stuff and how we work together. Um, if it was um, had financial implications, then it should be a weighted vote. And, uh, you know, I disagree that um, one community, one vote, especially when it comes to financial matters, and, but it's not that we deal with a lot of financial matters. And I think, um, in my opinion, if everybody is speaking around the table, everybody should vote uh, on it, unless there's, if there's really hardcore opposition, I think <coughs> that's when we go back in and discuss it more and work to resolution rather than uh, a majority of the votes cast. Uh, when it's the majority system, it's winners and losers. And if somebody has very strong feelings on one, I think it's, it's important to spend extra time going over it before you make a decision. This is not about opposing or imposing anything on any community it's about how do we as communities work together on matters of mutual interest and concern mm -hmm. thanks for that um i'm oh andy brad with that and, uh director unger i think you know the way we started back then you know as far as you know the mayor's meeting that's kind of changed it's you know the mayors and the directors on the msc I, I do see both sides where, you know, one vote for one each community. I understand that part. But we're still a committee, and you know, any big decisions are going to go to the board, anyways, for the board to pass. So, I don't have any problem changing. Uh, I take it four point two up. Okay. Um, who else do we have? I oh sorry I, I see a hand up but i i can't that's tell okay. who it is Colleen. that's fine that's fine okay, chair Davis. Um, 
Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate uh, Council Kerr bringing um, that forward. Uh, this is my first time being on the Municipal Services Committee and even when I was reviewing the minutes, there were a couple of suggestions about what this committee um, might uh, uh, tackle as, as issues or items um, to consider. Um, but I think it's important that we get this right. And I, the reason why I would support um, the recommendation that Council Kerr is bringing forward um, is because it is still going to all have to go to the board. This is just, um, you know, to me, this is an opportunity for us to have some of that rigorous discussion that by the time it moves forward to the board, it's really been vetted um, across the members of this municipality. I, I think it would, uh, I think it is a good recommendation. I, I certainly will support it unless I hear something different to um, cause me to change my mind. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, Director Kerr. Uh, thank you, Chair. You know, and, and listening to some of the discussion around this, I know some of the committees that I'm on in the community, we have, you know, uh, I don't know who mentioned that, uh, you know, given the model of winners and losers on voting, you know, I, I certainly understand that. And uh, but at the same time, in terms of representation, you know, when my immediate neighborhood has uh, more voters in it than some of the communities that are on the municipal um, committee. You kind of got to wonder about the fairness of that too. But some of the committees that, I, that I'm on have more of a consensus model of voting rather than a than just a, you know, votes for and votes against and moving ahead. And I think maybe, you know, in terms of, and this could just be something that that we aim for rather than than has to be embedded in our terms of reference, but that um, you know that we try to acknowledge the fact that that our smaller communities have a different lens that they look through uh, the world and uh, their communities just just like the smaller um, electoral areas have a different lens that are that's totally different than than Campbell River and and try to acknowledge that fact in anything that we're crafting rather than you know running a rough shot over you know over the smaller communities and, and the smaller communities not being heard I think this is an opportunity for for them to be heard and I think if like I say if we could craft any motions with with that in mind just working towards consensus rather than you know numbers a vote. That's just a comment. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Uh, Director Mogla. Yeah, thank you. And I really appreciate the discussion and it's, uh, it's quite interesting. I think that for the most part, I think most decisions uh, from this committee will be by consensus. I think that there's, there's often a lot of agreement. The problem I have with moving away from the one municipality, one vote issue is that there may be times, maybe, and maybe very rare, that um, some of the smaller communities want to move something forward and it's never going to and if if the directors from Campbell River for whatever reason is opposed to that it'll never get to the board so the whole idea that the board eventually will talk about it that's great but there may be issues that will never get there if we um, move away from the current voting structure so that's I, I, and I don't think that would happen very often at all but there may be times when that could happen and so, and I, in terms of the financial aspect, as far as I don't think that this committee has any voting power on anything financial, it always have to go to the board, and in which case it would be weighted. So, um, so I, I hear everybody, and I, I don't think it's a, it's a big, big issue, but I just sort of think that giving the smaller communities a voice, ha the best way is to keep the voting structure as is. Uh, no further comments there then. Uh, oh, Charlie. Just, just one. Thanks, Chair Davis. Um, Back to the, the only thing to that is we're, we're only talking about one community that has more than one vote or okay. more than one representative. And how are we going to sort out? Um, so the mayor disagrees with us, with the rest of um, the representatives for the community. Then there's no 
adverse direction, right? It removes um, however many other directors that we have that sit around the board. Mm -hmm. And then instead of resolving the issue and using a consensus model that uh, Director Kerr uh, was intimating, um, you're going to have that divisive dis um, construct at the board meeting. And that was the whole idea was to how do we work together on issues of mutual con um, interest and concern? How do we work together ourselves and take a recommendation to the board? And I see nothing wrong with, uh, with um, removing this section, and I haven't heard anything to change my mind on it. Uh, Director Adams. Uh, thank you. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to speak bluntly. Uh, the municipal services uh, uh, camaraderie and cordial nature is refreshing. And I think we uh, are, are certainly, as, a, as one of the directors from, from Campbell River, our understanding of the uh, situation of numbers and votes. Uh, but I do think we, uh, we pay close attention and listen and are respectful of uh, the opinions of our um, partner municipalities and, uh, and carry uh, the consensus of that forward to the board for, for final uh, deliberation and vote. So, um, but I think it's important that all uh, members of this board or this committee uh, have equal representation, voice, and vote. Thanks for that. Um, Director Mogla. Thanks. And Councillor Cornfield made a really good point that I hadn't thought of. And I have, in fact, changed my mind. Just so want you to know. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, this oh, is being recorded. Oh, actually, okay, uh, your worship, or uh, your, uh, your Mr. Director uh, Adams, you also made a good point. But in particular, Councillor Cornfield made a really good point. So. Um, I, I have changed my mind. <laughs> okay. What uh, was in that shot? What's that? What was in that <laughs> shot you got yesterday? <laughs> uh, I'm not seeing and, it. And, and, and my comment of cordial uh, uh, relationships is just proven. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. We, we like to maintain that when we can. Um, yeah. I, I guess my feeling is personally that it, it is good to have the Municipal Services Committee as a different animal and the fact that it doesn't seem to really have any financial implications doesn't really mean that it's going to affect anything whether we have further voting members like the <laughs> River Council here. So. I don't really have a, a, a strong opinion one way or the other with this. So um, I see another comment from uh, Director Cornfield. Um, actually, it's a, a different um, different topic, but I think it's important when we're on the, the uh, terms of reference. So I would just suggest that we move, call the question on the motion that's before us and see what happens. Okay, fair enough. You're calling the question? Yep. You're the chair. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm calling the question then. <laughs> Is there anybody opposed to this motion? Seeing none, it passes. Okay, Thanks, Thanks everybody. Moving on, uh, no bylaws. No, 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 no. We haven't left the terms of reference yet. Oh, that was just on that one motion to change uh, 4.2. I had um, another thought that okay. needs to be addressed in the terms of reference, and that okay. is uh, now that Cayuca First Nations is a member of the Regional District Board, are they viewed as an electoral area participating in the electoral area services committee or would they be a candidate for municipal services 
me and the Pope has said. Okay, is that what they're considered then, Mr. Uh, uh, yeah, municipality. CAO, eh? Yes, a municipality. Okay, so we should make sure that the terms of reference reflect that. And make sure that we also advise Director Jules of when we're going to have these meetings. Uh, do we need a motion for that? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so, Mr. Already, Chairman, I'm here. Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, oh. I, I would suggest that on. If, if the committee is going to be recommending to the board, which I think it is, that that the terms of reference be changed to eliminate section 4.2. That would be an opportune time to also <clears throat> to tune up these terms of reference to be um, to be clear that uh, First Nations directors are uh, because they're considered municipalities under the statute would be uh, appropriate to, to ensure the language reflects that in these terms of reference if that's the committee's wish. OK, thanks for the clarification. Uh, do you want to bring a motion forward, uh, Director Cornfield? Yeah, I would so move that the terms of reference be modified to reflect the um, recurrent representation of uh, Cayucat First Nation, Cayucat Checklist at First Nation. Do we have a seconder? Second. second. OK, any discussion on the motion? And I think Kevin's on here, isn't he? Yes. Kevin, would you like to comment? Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I sure am here. Um, thank you. Um, no, um, thank you for uh, pointing this out. And uh, I also wanted to thank Charlie for uh, his pronunciation. I mean, okay, you could check this. It's perfect. It was good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. OK, any further discussion? Seeing none, is there anyone opposed? Carried. Okay, so now we can move on. <laughs> uh, no bylaws, no correspondence. Uh, any director's reports? Um, is this a roundtable discussion or? Uh, it could be new business. How about that? Okay. Okay. No director's reports. New business. I have one. Who would like to start? Uh, director Unger, I think I heard you there. Would you like Thank to go you, ahead? Uh, Chair. Yes, I just uh, come to thought when we we're I was looking at the regular agenda as we look at a, a regional uh, recreation on our on our open meeting today. Brought back something that I know I talked to uh, Mr. Leach about quite some time ago about you know a fire protection and you know a, a possible fire protection for the regional uh, area especially our smaller community out, outlining you no know, gold river tasses to you know sayward and that type of thing so i'm just looking at if there's an appetite that maybe we could get staff in to look at uh, the possibility of a fire a regional fire protection service <coughs> yeah that's uh an interesting proposal. Um, I'm not sure how that would work. Uh, Director Adams. Uh, thank you. Just um, uh, wondering, Mr. Leach, do you want to share uh, the conversation that we had yesterday regarding uh, uh, connected coast and opportunity, or do you want to wait? I will wait on that, um, but if I can, Director Davis uh, brings up a, a point about how it would work. So just uh, to let the committee know that we have two fire services studies going on right now that are close to conclusion one in area d and one in area a um we have i have casually talked to the consultant about you know doing a a, a regional fire service study and uh, he thinks there's some value in it obviously we would not be looking at you know campbell river putting out a fire in tassas but he does believe there is plenty of synergies there in the fire services that uh, that could uh, you know, bring some economies together from uh, the expertise uh, that Campbell River has and the resources and uh, bring some economies to all the member municipalities in, in doing a study. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you may all remember, uh, uh, TAS has already extended its fire service area to Mucha Bay Resort through an agreement directly with them. So uh, we're, we're already moving in that direction. Director Cornfield? 
Yeah, I would. I had some questions for Director Unger when they talk about fire protection service, and uh, you know, because there's wildfire issues, you know, which involves every player in the regional district, not just uh, communities. But then there's structural fires, more fires you have inside your municipalities, um, because. Our fire services these days are now, they changed the name from fire departments to fire rescue. Uh, so there is a uh, number of rescue functions. We have mutual aid agreements where our crews go out for auto wrecks and stuff on the <laughs> adjacent highways outside of the municipality. So just I think it's a good question about how we handle those. Um, there's issues about training that uh, by maybe coming up with some kind of a service or some kind of agreement uh, where um, outlying fire departments could get um, extra training in different uh, situations that they would see maybe through the city of Campbell River, our fire department. Um, supply chain issues. Uh, you get a a big fire and it's what if, where does the hose come from or pumps or like a mutual aid uh, setup. I know wildfire, we were required after the big fires in 2003, I think it was in the Okanagan and the fire smart program came down. We were required to prepare um, regional uh, fire plans which I think have been done um, and sort of evolving over time. But I think it's a good good topic for discussion that maybe um, we could have a, um, staff come in. God, my, my memory is... <laughs> who's, who's our um, emergency service? Sean Koopman. Yeah, our, our keener Sean. Uh, come and sort of update the committee of what services we have now in emergency services or fire. And I think that would be some good discussion that we could have following that and refine it a bit more and be interested in hearing what others have to say. Yeah, that sounds like a very good idea. Um, Director Unger. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, there's no doubt this has really kind of spurred me from back in you know, uh, January, February, when we had some issues with our fire chief and, you know, we were wondering what we we're doing for your community and that kind of stuff. Uh, reaching agreement with Canberra River Fire to help us out. And we talked a little bit then, and, and, and like I say, it's not as much as, you know, Canberra River coming to fight fires uh, in Gold River. It's more, you know, like Director Cornfield said, you know, maybe some training, uh, you know, supply stuff. Um, you know, that kind of stuff that, that you know, may help out the smaller communities. And if, you know, if somebody's looking at, you know, buying hoses, well, you know, can you buy five hoses? It will be cheaper. You know, that, that kind of stuff is what I'm thinking. You know, that's why my kind of thought was, you know, just to get staff to prepare, you know, a report on the concept more than anything. But that's that's where I was coming from. Okay. Thanks for that, Brad. Uh, Director Kerr. Thank you, Chair. And that just kind of brings to mind for me this discussion, you know, some of the the changes that are happening in the in the health community where you've got uh, centralized um, uh, support or experts and and you got the technology actually to for outlying communities to access that support in in real time um you know if you have that kind of support for small communities with the with the technology of drones and and that sort of thing and being able to get um uh, support and advice um you know in real time uh you know i mean i think the the cost of those kind of things would be very low and yet the potential you know because a lot of these these issues are dependent on, on getting information immediately rather than the next day or you know whatever time it takes for support to get to that location so i think that there there certainly is you know in terms of the advance of technology and certainly if 
you know, Connected Coast gives us more tools in order to get that kind of, um, of uh, ability that, um, you know, having some kind of centralized uh, service and, and support would, would really be, um, you know, great for the smaller communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can certainly see a lot of synergies with working closer with the provincial wildfire service. So, you know, may, maybe even some 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 joint exercises. I don't know, like just to fill in the gaps because there, there, there's certainly some gaps in services as they are right now. Um, I don't see any other comments. Uh, Director Cornfield, did you want to bring a motion for it? Well, I was going to wait Director for a motion. Yeah, that's the oh, one sorry. there. It's okay, Thank David you. Leach. I got I got it in hand. Okay. That okay. was going to be my comment. That uh, I will certainly second Director Unger's motion. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Director Unger. Well, if you're done the conversation, then yeah, I do have subsequent. I move that a report be prepared on the concept of a fire of a regional fire protection service within the regional district. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, is there anybody opposed? That passes. Thanks, everybody. Um, okay. Do we want to do a little bit of a round table on issues in our communities? Continue that. <laughs> I, I oh, guess. Thanks. Davis, <clears throat> sorry, it's, um, it's Director Evans. I'm just wondering um, the motion. Uh, I know we've passed that motion, but there was also discussion about having um, Sean Koopman coming. And I'm just wondering if staff had perceived as part of bringing a report forward, would it also include some opportunity to interact directly with uh, Mr. Koopman? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you consider that direction of staff. Uh, so we'll be looking forward to uh, having a conversation with uh, Sean Koopman at the next meeting. OK. Um, regarding community reports, I, I guess I'll start with that. Um, one of our big issues in TASIS has been the, the government wharfs. Um, one has been condemned. It, it needs to be taken down. And that's a huge issue for us because the cost is $100,000. But I, I do have some good news to report in that the Coast Guard has uh, recently agreed, at least uh, verbally, although we don't have a written agreement, to uh, take on the, the uh, removal of that wharf and build a new one for, for their Coast Guard dock because this was something they had originally proposed to do in a different location which turned out not to be viable. And uh, so we're happy to see that starting to move forward again. Um, having said that, we don't really have a good functional municipal wharf at this point, but uh, we're waiting on a grant and we may not hear about it till uh, October I'm, I'm hearing. So to completely rebuild our, our own municipal wharf in a different location, it'll be partly fixed wharf with concrete pilings and then two large floats off of it. So, uh, so that that's one of the projects I'm really hoping moves forward because uh, if we don't get this grant, we're really hooped because we are trying to uh, promote more aquaculture in the area. We recently had a, a, a presentation from a, a, a company that grows seaweed commercially, and they're very interested in this area, but we're struggling with infrastructure. So until we get the infrastructure, it's really hard to promote aquaculture as fully as we would like to in this area. So, so that's one of the big issues for us. Does anybody else want to make a report? Okay, hearing none. Um, no, you got two hands up. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there's the hands. Okay, they just came up. It's in TASIS. It takes a little while for the hands to get here, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure who is first, so Director Kerr. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just wanted to talk a little bit about homelessness and uh, more specifically uh, addiction and mental health services. Um, you know, recent, as you've probably seen recently, Campbell River has had, in addition to their supportive housing, 
uh, projects, which has you know definitely taken some pressure off of our downtown issues. Uh, and also the SRD has sponsored uh, strengthening communities grant funding, which is it's more of a <clears throat> a regional um, initiative to not just for Campbell River, but um, sending out the moose van and, and services to the surrounding areas. So I'd be really interested on, you know, for some of the smaller communities, just getting reports from them uh, regarding uh, homelessness or, like I said, more specifically addiction and mental health issues, which generally they're, they're pretty linked uh, and driven by um, in their communities and just their response to the, uh, the grant funding and, and any other initiatives that are happening right now. Right. Uh, if I could just respond to that for in regard to TASIS, um, we don't really have a homeless issue in that everybody lives in a home. We certainly have a poverty issue. We have uh, uh, mental health issues, and uh, we've been trying to figure out some better ways of dealing with that than just purely police responses. But Island Health has been very helpful, and they, they have uh, their representative come out uh, every two weeks, I believe. So that that's forming a bit of a bridge between, uh, you know, just strictly a police response and, and uh, a true mental health response. So that, that is really making a difference here. So I, I will add that. Um, Director Cornfield. Oh, just um, in terms of your doc situation, Mm -hmm. uh, Director Davis, there was the federal program where they were downloading all the federal docs, but they also provided a source of funding as well. Um, Director Abram probably knows that issue better than anyone, and you could maybe have a chat with him, uh, because we took over as a regional district, um, we took over a number of uh, federal facilities all through the uh, uh, the Gulf Islands, Northern Gulf, you know, Discovery Islands area. And uh, Jim's been very active in that because it is essential infrastructure, especially to small unincorporated areas or small communities. Really important. Yeah, I, I didn't think that extended to small communities, but I, I, I could be wrong on that. Yeah. yeah. OK, uh, Director Unger. Yeah, uh, one quick one on your wharf too. I know uh, Gold River took over the government wharf a number of years ago, and it's uh, uh, you know good and bad. But uh, yeah, we took over ours. As far as uh, homelessness for uh, Director Kerr, uh, we definitely have uh, some addiction, mental health, uh, more and more concerns in our community. Homelessness, we don't really have a lot. Uh, there's a an older complex. Uh, that I understand people are kind of living in it, whether they're paying rent or not, it's hard to say. We have a new ownership group of a of that complex and we're we're trying to meet with him to see what's going on there. As far as other stuff on Gold River, I think on the on the on the good or bad side, I guess, we're reorganizing our staff. We had our CEO resign. We're about to into uh, an agreement with a new one. We'll need a finance person come out uh, coming out very soon and hopefully by May long weekend, I think our economic De development tourism committee have been working on a, a project right by the mall area in town. The, the village owns a piece of boulevard and they're redone it and putting kiosks up. I think there's six of them going up with maps of you know, different things to do uh, you know, within the area, all our hiking areas, uh, swimming holes and that kind of stuff. So once that gets done, we'll move some of our our wood carvings over the last few years up there. So it's really a, a nice, you know, going to beautify, you know, kind of help the downtown area. So that's exciting to come. And uh, yeah, I think everybody was looking forward to tourism this year, but um, I think we're going to be in about the same boat we were last year. So we'll just leave it with that. Thanks. Brad, can I just ask, uh, is there any, uh, like, I noticed somebody was doing a survey, uh, including in Tassos, regarding opening another grocery store in uh, Gold River. Do you know if that's going ahead? Yeah, Mr. Lee, Lee you, uh, I had a conversation with him recently. He is still in negotiations with 
the owner of the mall uh, for where the old store was. So I know he's actively trying to, trying to finish the deal to get going on it. And there's another fellow that put a thing on the Golder Community event about a co-op type store, farm market, that type of thing, uh, just recently. So, but as far as a, a full grocery store, there's some good talks, and I'm, I'm hoping by, you know, possibly next week, uh, we'll hear back from Richard Lee on, and the landlord of some agreement. Yeah, we're looking forward to hearing that too in the uh, process, just because it is such a long ways to uh, Amble River yep. from us. You betcha. Director Evans. Thank you, Chair. And um, just two items that we may want to consider if the, the committee thinks these are a valuable um, time to spend on. Uh, and they're not new. They're items that have been talked about uh, before. The first one is around um, tourism and as part of COVID and economic recovery, I don't know if there would be interest in, to look at some specific regional approaches to um, tourism, um, but that's one that certainly um, the communities that I've chatted with up and down the island, that certainly is something that uh, is uh, very timely in terms of what they're looking at in order to, um, again, come out of uh, uh, COVID and uh, looking at some economic recovery opportunities. And the second one is around transportation and the concerns of what's been happening with the uh, bus services and uh, the concerns about people being able to keep the appointments. So those are just two topics that I wanted to put forward. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not suggesting that uh, these are priority, but I do think that they would make for an interesting discussion on this committee. Um, just to have a better understanding of how it's impacting the entire region, not just uh, not just the municipal. Point. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. It might be good to look at a regional strategy for this. Um, I, I know we've been sort of going at, uh, going early. <laughs> I know we we've been sort of going it on our own uh, here in terms of. Uh, trying to find a transportation strategy for TASIS. And we're, we've actually been talking to uh, some people uh, for out of Courtney that are interested in potentially doing a service out this way and, and to TASIS. And I did mention that, you know, there could be some synergies with Gold River and Sagana as well. So, mm -hmm. but a regional strategy would, would be a good conversation to have, absolutely. Um, Director Adams. Uh, thank you. And just for the benefit of um, those directors that may not be aware, uh, Kirsten Sauter from uh, Destination Campbell River uh, did do presentations in the past to the board. Uh, the electoral areas were, were not uh, um, interested. So then uh, Kirsten did a presentation to the municipal services uh, of which for the past number of years she has been working with uh, the communities of Gold River and Tathis and, and Sabella's tied in with the Mount Waddington tourism uh, to help uh, uh, raise the profile and assist in their tourism initiatives. Okay, thanks for that. Director Cornfield. Um, thank you, Chair. I'll just turn my little hand off again. Um, at our recent or last council meeting, we passed a motion that I'd brought forward regarding uh, forestry. And I think it's something that we need to talk about uh, regionally. Um, it has to do with a lot of the issues that are coming forward in some local governments passing um, forest motions. Um, I'm just going to switch my little machine over. Um, so it was really concerning to Campbell River um, and the North Island where forestry is a big economic driver. And uh, we had passed and had um, resolutions passed at AVIC and UBCM that decisions should be made based on science in fact not on emotion and conjecture or on misinformation disinformation and untruths so um 
No, I, I don't want to spring a whole motion on it, but uh, I think for the next meeting, I think it's important that we have a discussion on forestry and uh, some of the challenges that they're they're facing. Um, I don't like it when people with no experience in the economic the economics of forestry um, start to make decisions or want to influence the government and what really ticks me off is I fully support the people with the right for um, to protest or to demonstrate in the proper manner but when you defy uh, the Supreme Court when you defy our government uh, that's anarchy and that is unacceptable and uh, yeah and I think a lot of people are are getting upset and it's time we got back to science and stuff so I'd like to see some discussion on the forest issue at our at our next municipal services committee and I'll send a package in to people if if that's what they want I'll put together a package of information so yeah so that was my thought okay thanks for that Charlie um just so that you know, we, we are going to be considering a motion to in the village of Tassis to endorse the recommendations of the old growth. Uh, I can't remember the exact name of the old, old growth forest uh, review panel that was going around a year and a half ago. And I was considering uh, bringing that forward to for discussion mm -hmm. at the, um, the the regional board panel. Uh, sorry, the regional board itself. So we could also have that discussion here, but no, I, I think it could be a broader discussion. Yeah, I think, well, like we said earlier, uh, we have discussion on items of mutual interest and concern. If mm -hmm. we do it here, then those could be carried forward to the regional board. Absolutely. So you, you want, want this to be on the agenda of the next meeting then? I, I think it's timely and important enough to warrant it, yes. I agree absolutely. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could. Um, so just a reminder to directors, uh, as you see on the screen that I'm sharing under Section L, there is the ability for any director, of course, to submit uh, something that will uh, then show up on the agenda for discussion. Um, short of a motion being passed for staff to investigate and bring back a report or whatever, uh, Section L does exist for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Are you good with that, Charlie? Yeah, well, sure, but I thought we were doing sort of uh, under our terms of reference, like the update in the communities on which topics were, were there. So it was just, in my opinion, was just a topic that I think is worthy of discussion and pop it wherever it likes in terms of yeah. the agenda. But to me, I thought we were sort of consensus model so that it's if the rest of the committee thinks that it's a good idea to have discussion on it, then we should add it somewhere. And yeah, I we don't can get it on the agenda. Yeah, I don't necessarily see it as the a particular director's responsibility to put stuff towards the agenda without having some discussion with the committee. That's all. Yeah, that's fair yeah. comment. So, Dave, if you can add it to the agenda, that would be wonderful. Yep. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that anybody wants to bring forward here? Hearing nothing, uh, I'll uh, entertain a motion to terminate. So moved. moved. Second. Second. Okay. Third. Uh, is there anybody opposed? Of course <laughs> not. Thanks, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. Martin. In an hour. Yeah. In an hour. Yeah.